It's a great honor and pleasure to welcome you to the EDA Annual Conference 2030. We are here today to address a critical topic that is at the heart of how Europe can provide for its security and interest and remain a credible actor in the world through a more systematic and longer term approach to defence cooperation. I think it's unrealistic to expect that there's going to be additional funding put into defence, but I think that emphasises the necessity for greater cooperation right across the board. Thank you very much. But we still face critical capability gaps. Uh, the bottom line, frankly, is that Europe needs to take action to address those gaps. Unless it does so and urgently, there is a risk of further diminishing our strategic defence, industrial and technical abilities. We have no choice. Whether we like it or not, we have to work together. Cooperation works quicker if everybody feels the need to cooperate, and that need is being felt more and more at this moment. If you start to develop a collaborative approach, not just for governments but also with industry, then you can find ways of trying to make sure that you're using resources as efficiently and effectively as you possibly can. More to do, but we really have started that process. The pooling and sharing code of conduct, it has gained the support of member states, but now all the member states need to make it work. We in EDA are working at collecting national inputs so we can produce a state of play report at the end of this year. In, uh, all in all, we will have to take some risk. I mean, but we cannot afford not to take those risks, and cooperation is not a risk, it's an opportunity. For me, the important thing is to make concrete progress on three key issues. First, priorities for future investment and equipment procurement. Second, strengthening our industrial base so that it remains competitive and innovative. Third, and finally, the preparation and availability of forces. European Defence Matters, that's the title of the conference. Does it really, beyond the words, the nice words, the nice speeches we are hearing all the time for many years now, does it really matter for European leaders? We no longer have a direct territorial threat to Europe. Uh, that is also deeply ingrained in the minds of our citizens and that is why very often in opinion polls they show little readiness to increase defence spending in traditional terms. How do we move forward? The crisis should not be seen as an excuse to put things off, but instead as an opportunity to launch initiatives, to preserve capabilities that would otherwise be lost to budget cuts. We believe that the European Commission can contribute to enhancing the industrial base, which is essential to develop a meaningful common defense and security policy. Our assessment by and large, I think, in, in Europe is, well, we'll, we'll have to face a decade with no growth, more likely further decline in defense budget. We need to provide EDA with some serious money and some serious uh, instruments to, to drive forward decisions. Our industry is a long-term uh, perspective view, so we really need a plan. At the end of the year, we may have a kind of plan on the next five, six, seven years that will help us to know where we have to put our efforts. Trust is very important. And if we discuss about cooperation, Cooperation should be a solution in which both sides, both sides have results, positive results, both sides invest. It's really an opportunity, the situation we are facing now. Cooperation should take place in areas where you don't have to show money, where you can save money. And that is cooperation in, uh, in service support and maintenance. Heads of uh, state and government should take into consideration not only the problems of market, industry, very important, very important for the future of defense industry, but also uh, political questions, uh, political and security questions. Upon receiving the Nobel Peace Prize in Oslo last December, 
European leaders said the European Union stands by those in pursuit of peace and human dignity. To fulfill such responsibilities, we should make sure we have the means at our disposal. No longer words, that was a kind of common message. No words, we don't need words, we need action. And also we need programs, we need research and technology, we need money, and we need money for defence.